calling just to see if you have a slot open for conducting a proof of proficiency exam. I have my authorization to carry permit expiring in just a few weeks here, so I've got to do that over again. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I'll have to find a shooting range for that. It's been kind of difficult the last while with this COVID situation. You know? So next week, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, let's do this then. Hello and welcome back to the Way to Native Chronicles. Although it seems not everyone is aware of it, especially in the States, in Canada we're allowed to carry handguns for specific purposes, and in my case it's as a trapper. And the way things work here in this country is you have to get a special permit. It's called an authorization to carry, and that permit is issued on a two-year basis. Actually, the first time you get it, it's only one year. So every two years after that, you have to take what's called a proof of proficiency exam. And that involves taking your handgun to a range with a recognized examiner, and you have to go through a course of fire with it, which is designed to test your abilities to protect yourself in the case of an animal attacking you. So that would be drawing the gun from your holster and placing six shots in rapid succession at targets of varying distances. So what I'm gonna do in this video is, uh, since I have to go through this process again, I'm gonna just walk you through what I have to do. Let's get going. Okay, so now we are ready to start this process. We're gonna apply for an authorization to carry. And to get that ball rolling, what you wanna do is you wanna call the Chief Firearms Office. Their number is easy to find on the internet. Give them a call, tell them this is what you wanna do. I wanna, wanna apply for an authorization to carry. And what they'll do is they'll email you uh, the, the forms that you need to fill out and the instructions. So probably within a week, you should get this in your email inbox. Now you can see in this email that they are providing you with two documents and they are also giving you some instructions on what's going to be involved. There's some items on there that don't apply. They're more for armored vehicle guards, stuff like that. Uh, but uh, so don't mind that too much. Just uh, Get those documents and download them onto your hard drive and next I'm going to show you how you fill them in. Okay, now that you've received your application forms from the CFO, you'll have them saved down into a folder somewhere on your hard drive. What I want you to do next and what I recommend anyways, is you fill out these forms using a graphics editor and uh, what you can do is you can get the free program called GIMP uh, you can look that up on the internet so get GIMP that's what you see installed here running right now and you can just go and select open and it the files you receive from the CFO are going to be in PDF format so this is how I recommend you do it and uh, we'll also have a preview of the file contents as well and which fields to fill out. So the first one let's take a look at is this 5491E PDF. When I double click it or just click it and click open what you see next is that this GIMP editor is very smart and knows how to take apart these PDF files and if I was to bring up this first one I can bring up one page at a time which is what you really want to have happen anyways. Okay, so I can see this page and you can see the first page in that form is just uh, instructions which you'll do well to, to read and uh, give you some tips on how to make sure your application goes through smoothly. So refer to that as you need to and let's open up the next page. So I'm just going to open up the, uh, actually I could just go recent to open up the the same one again. We'll go to page two. You can see there again we have uh, 
more instructions what to fill in in each box but you won't need to read those so much because you're just gonna listen to me right okay so now we're gonna go to open recent again we'll open that same file and this time we're gonna take the first one that we <clears throat> that we actually have to fill stuff in on now what I'd recommend you do if you take a look over here on the left hand side use an Arial fo font size 16 okay Arial size 16 uh, use left hand justification and on your line spacing go ahead and use 18 points now, that's going to work best for the forms that follow so now we're going back to this form here and we're just going to fill this out using the computer and the reason I recommend this is number one it's very clear and number two you can make corrections uh, on this without having to redo the whole form and make a mess of it this is going to come in especially handy when you um, do the longer forms where you have to fill in explanations so uh, when you fill in like this you'll be able to save this page down to a file and so that you have a future reference of it and then you can also uh, print it just by going to print right so uh, that'll make uh, give you some real nice nice clearly filled out forms okay so let's get in the nuts and bolts of this for, if you are applying for an authorization to carry uh, if you are a new, if you are doing this for the first time, make an X, X on it. Okay, and I could take this, this X and I can put it right in there if I want to make designate this as a as a new application. If you've never applied for an ATC before, this is what you're going to have to do. But in my case. Uh, and if you're just going to be new then just put your X there okay next you're going to want to have your current authorization number so you're definitely going to want to fill that in here and that's going to be you know a, uh, a one two three four five six seven eight nine it's it's a long number right and you can always go back to this little little uh, cross here and move stuff around as you after you've finished typing it in just to make it neater and go back to your text um, marker there and then you can type in a, a number for your uh, for your firearms license number then you're going to want to fill in your last name you know so I'm not uh, getting too worried about about where I'm placing this stuff right now and we'll just put in just putting this in for an example right so you can, you can always just grab this little cross and move these guys whoops if you accidentally move the form just hit control Z so it comes back and make sure you touch it the, the the lettering when you move these guys so we got this guy here and the following forms is going to be easier because we're just going to okay well I'll just put that in there so you can see that now we have this part of the form filled out nice and neat and the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to skip this in this section C and you're going to skip section D and you're just going to go down to here and let's make sure we've got our text selected I want to have an X here for 8B and I want to have an X for this one and an X for that one well, let's just move these guys into the proper place here okay so we got that X oops control Z because I moved the paper by accident and we'll do that one and that one if you forget control Z then you can just go to edit undo move okay so now what we have here is we have this page filled out and what I recommend you do next is 
do a save and I think I can just go save here yeah and I'm gonna go 549e and call it page 3 now I have that saved down and I can right away I can go print it out right in right now to the printer if I wanted to just with the straight settings um, but I would recommend just getting all this computer stuff done first so now let's go and let's get the fourth page open okay so I I want this page here oh, it should be page three oh yeah I got the right pages okay so anyhow I've got this one loaded up now now here is where you're gonna have to fill in uh, the firearms registration number for whichever firearms handguns you're applying for so this one would be you know a certain number and this one would be a an identification number here for your firearm and this one here is another this one here is the firearms license number of the owner of the gun which if it's somebody else and you have to put down their number so you could I wonder if I could just hold down control and I'll just zoom in Oop. yeah I should be able to pick that up uh -oh. maybe shift uh -oh. I guess not I'll do one at a time well control Z I moved the paper now this seems a little bit slow on these pages but uh, you know if you want to you better just zoom a little, a little closer. Okay, so now we got that's that done. Next thing I want to want you to do is designate the province that you're applying for, right? And we'll maybe move that little X a little bit better. <laughs> there we go. And what else we gotta do? Okay, so the last part, are you you're gonna be pain? So, you know, if you're pain with uh, a Visa card, you're gonna want to check that. That's probably the best, simplest way. So you would type in your your number here, and whatever it is, eh? And then the date, oh, to let's say uh, 25, whatever. And then uh, feel fix the cat, or maybe it's Mr. Mr. Felix the cat, right? So, so let's just get these guys a little bit neat here make everything look nice I won't have any excuse for this not to work and then the rest of this you're just gonna have to do a, a two signatures and two dates and you've basically got this guy done here right so we're gonna save this one down as we'll call it page so now we have our forms this one and that one ready to go they can be sent off to the printer anytime you want if you want to make some duplicates for your own uh, record keeping then you're good to go for that as well okay now let, let's move on to the next one I don't think we missed out any fields here no now I'll j just mention you no know, if it's for more than one handgun then of course you gotta fill in more blanks here okay but most people it's just one one gun. Okay, now let's move on <clears throat> to this is the bigger one, and this is the one where it really comes in handy to have uh, this done in a in a graphics editor. I'm gonna take the first one page here, even though I don't think I have to fill anything in out on it, just to give you a look what it looks like. Okay, so here they're just giving you some instructions. Uh, for your reference 
and next one we want is the second page here okay so you know remember at the beginning I was suggesting let's say you have your your text tool selected right We've got Arial the 16 point size left hand justification and 18 for the line spacing so now what I can do <clears throat> so I can answer these questions for instance, so what is your profession or occupation as it relates to this application describe your work duties well okay so I'm not gonna spend time uh, on this because it's just an example so I'll say this shows how much easier it is to fill in a form like this using a text editor because when you do it this way if you have to reword things in order for everything to fit on well on not on let's say within the blanks provided you can do that much easier so now that I've done that I have my line spacing all kind of worked out there so I can take this whole thing I can shift it around a little bit and if I want to reword something you know I can just go in here with the text editor again and I could say you know wanna if I don't want to have it say reword I could just say word things and it all looks nice and neat I can just go on to the next one click a my text editor and what's the geographic area you want you you are where you wish to carry the handgun um, and you might say something like uh, I am going to be using it on my trap line number you know such and such eh? things like that you can you can fill in this these forms because a lot of these ones you have to kind of word them out so that it you have to substantiate uh, your requirement for carrying a handgun so be very careful when you're filling these things out uh, be clear provide all the information that's needed you know you gotta tell them during which which date ranges you wanna use the handgun and things like that when you're gonna need it so we got this page so you can basically just go through all your pages just like that let's just bring up the other ones that are remaining uh, maybe I'll just let you I'll zoom out a little bit just so you have an idea of what what things are being uh, looked at here I wonder if I can just make this zoom a little bit better here okay so uh, to make it clear okay let's get another file so this is going to be now uh, the second page or the third page I should say oh I forgot let's go back to the previous one let's go save it and this one I'm going to just add on to the edge end here I think it's uh, page three isn't it where's it page two uh, page two yeah okay so page two and that's saved as an XCF file which is the form the file format for this GIMP editor so I'll save this guy down then when I go to this next page I loaded you notice that these in this case these blanks carry on to the next page just so you're aware of that and don't expect this to be the same every year because I've noticed it is diff it changes from year to year so uh, they may ask some new questions uh, on in each year and leave some out each year so uh, uh, just so you got a heads up on that but you know let's see control shift J I think will get it to show the full size here's the kind of questions you're gonna get asked on the second page 
when you're finished with that then you're going to want to save and we'll call this one page three right and you know anytime you want to print it off you just go to print right so let's open up the final page just so you have a look at what they're going to contain. Whoops, what did I do here? No, I think I opened the same one twice. Let's do this again. Oh, that's because I've opened the one that I saved before. And we've got to remember to get this combined file. Okay, so this one, oh, look at all the pages in here, eh? So now we've got this page. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on each of these, but, uh, but let's just say, you know, there's a Here's the questions you got to answer. Let's try another one here. Whoops, 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 picked up the wrong one here. Okay, let's get, which one is, oh yeah, this guy here. So we got three, oh yeah, we got that one, and we got this one. Now here, we got, you can print, print out your name and uh, get your email address and stuff like that. Cat and, and we can uh, see if I can hit enter and get to the right spacing. No, that's not going to work, so we'll just do a separate entry. Um, and then we'll do another one here. If, it's your, if you want to, you can just zoom in. Control mouse wheel. That's just zoom in and out. And 780, blah, 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 blah. Whatever, eh? That's not my phone number, by the way. Okay. So now we got that there. We can just kind of, whoa, control Z. Move the paper again. We'll put that there. Put that there. Just kind of bump that up. Everything looks nice and neat. And then all you have to do is just physically sign and date this document. Now the rest of it is going to be um, the proof of proficiency uh, exam form. And that is something that I don't think you have to do anything with. But it's but just to recap, you know, we will save down each of these pages. We can print them off right away as soon as we're, we're happy with uh, how they look. And that part of the whole application process is done for you. Really nice uh, to be able to go back and reword some of those sections there. Uh, let's take a look <clears throat> at, at the proof of proficiency. So that it's going to go down. The first page, as as usual, is just sort of an explanation of what the test is going to be like and uh, how you're scored, stuff like that. Uh, then we also want to look at the next page to that, which is going to be another bit of explanation. Then we're going to look at where the Good stuff starts. Okay, so this is what your examiner is going to be filling out. So make sure there's no mistakes on here when he does that. And uh, the examiner's got to be somebody who's provincially certified, recognized as being uh, qualified to perform this test. And that person you will very likely be paying money to probably going to also have to pay some range fees uh, in addition to that and don't forget you're going to have to come with uh, a fair bit of ammunition even if you shot everything s straight on through and didn't fail any any s stage of the test you still need uh, I think 36 rounds so if you want to be on the sea you get up to three tries at each distance so 36 times three that's the uh, Minimum. That's the amount of ammunition you should bring with you. So you can see here, you're going to have your your name put in here. 
uh, registration certificate, the description of the gun, and he's, here's the important stuff, pass, fail, pass, fail, pass, fail. So they're going to be looking at uh, the firearm magazine being loaded safely, uh, whether you holster it safely and prepare for the proof of proficiency uh, exam. Uh, you, look, you have to use a type of ammunition that's uh, full house loads. You're not going to be able to use just a little uh, weak uh, target shooting loads. They have to be uh, the same loads that you would take for self-protection. Uh, so just going down this list, just giving you kind of a idea. You got to draw from the holster and fire smoothly. Oh, that examiner is going to be watching you like a hawk, and he's trained to spot any kind of uh, miss that you make, any missteps that you make, especially in terms of safety. If you do something unsafe, you're failed right there on the spot. So then it goes down further into this test where you're going to do your get three tries at this type of shooting which is standing at a target that's five meters away and you're gonna have a try at shooting at, at 10 meters away and then you can have a try at shooting at it 15 meters away then you're gonna have to do the same thing from a kneeling position so if you do it all clean the first time then you just have pass pass here and this doesn't have to get filled in. Let's see what the following page says here. Okay. So, where are we here? Okay, that's that. Let's see what it says here. Okay. Oh, this is for a second firearm. So, we got that. And, uh, and we got, I think, one more page. Let's see what that looks like. I wonder, this must be for... Oh, that's the one we were just looking at, I guess, eh? Okay, let's open up that last one. Okay, this last one here is where that examiner is going to sign his name and date it. Uh, basically swearing that he has uh, honestly evaluated this test and his reputation is on the line for for doing that and then the CFO's office uses this portion. Okay, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to parse back here just so you get, cause they do tell you how the test is scored here, so why don't we, since we're here, let's take a look at this because uh, Passing this test is not something that you're going to be able to do if you just go to the gun store and buy a handgun and go out there and say, I'm ready to take the test if you've never shot a handgun before. You, uh, this is not that easy. It's not It's not terrible, terrible hard either, but uh, you know when you're shooting a, a handgun like a 44 Magnum that uh, recoils a lot, actually a lot of people would have great difficulty passing this test unless they've done a lot of practice and got accustomed to uh, not flinching at uh, the recoil of the handgun because it gets it makes you a worse and worse shot if you let that start to affect you in addition to that let me just mention right now too when we we're talking about the test now they're watching how you draw the holster and stuff by all means if you don't have it already get some training uh, you could probably pay that same person who does the exam to pay him a certain amount for an hour's worth of training so that you use a proper technique because he's the one that's going to score you so have him teach you what he thinks you should do because feeling the safety portion of how you holster the gun and load it and and draw it. Those are very specific. You can't allow that muzzle, for instance, to cross any part of your body. So you gotta have really control your left hand position, for instance. And you have to control, you know, when your finger gets onto the trigger, stuff like that. Plus, you know, just in terms of being able to shoot rapidly, you only have, like you can see here, 
uh, you have 20 seconds to fire off your six shots at the target, which you know, can get more challenging as you get out to that 15 meter distance. Um, you have to fire six rounds. Uh, you have to shoot, you know, fire from both the standing and kneeling position, so that means you're going to need a range where you can take the table out of the way so that you can shoot from a kneeling position. And the way they score you is that uh, all your shots have to be in a 9 inch radius or 23 centimeter radius. Uh, you got to have 15 of those shots out of the 18 fired have to be within that radius. Uh, let's see, so if you f fail to get that many, you can do it again uh, an additional two times. If you fail three times, then you then you basically fail the whole test and you can't take the test again for a certain period of time. I think it's a month or three months, something like that. It says in here somewhere. But anyways, hopefully that uh, helps you out a little bit in filling out your form. Okay, that wraps up the filling in of the forms. This has been quite a long video, rather tedious I suppose, but I thought it might be what some people need. What they want to see, they see each form, see the type of information that has to be put into them. And uh, maybe some of the editing techniques might be helpful to some of you. You don't have to do it that way. You can just print them off and fill them in by hand. But, but really when you're filling in a lot of these long form answers, <clears throat> the way you word it is pretty important that you get your point across because you're trying to convince the person reviewing your application that you're for real and that this isn't a frivolous thing. So word it, reword it, try to fit it all into the blanks provided. That's why I'm suggesting strongly, you know, if you can, uh, do it right on a computer where you can kind of backspace and, and edit and just get things right. You know, get the, the form nice and neat to whoever's going to receive it and it's going to be viewed in a more positive light. And make sure you answer all the questions as fully as you can. Really go through the extra effort of providing detail on how you've researched things, let's say with uh, conservation officers, things like that. That all helps. Now, at the conclusion of this video, I realize that there is really just so much to cover that I can't do it all in one. So. What I'm proposing to do is to create an additional three videos, perhaps, on this subject of obtaining an authorization to carry, because I think there is uh, quite a bit of interest. It's sort of a narrow interest because it doesn't apply to everyone, but a lot of people are interested nevertheless. And uh, it's something that not uh, everyone is even aware of. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a mystery subject, and I don't see it covered anywhere else on the net. So. Uh, hopefully this will be a good series of videos. So uh, let me know down in the comments what you think, what this kind of stuff you still want to know is, what's important to you. I have done videos in the past uh, discussing this topic in some detail as well, but I'd like to improve on that because I now have a uh, video of myself doing the proof of proficiency exam just yesterday as a matter of fact when I had to redo it so uh, I think some people might like to see that whole test being conducted how, how it's uh, done you know with the rapid fire and the distances just to get a feel for it what to expect uh, in addition another video that would be good to do is also one just on the techniques uh, a little bit of training involved and how you should uh, use a holster, uh, the best technique for rapid fire with a heavy recoiling handgun. These topics aren't covered all that much anywhere. So just on that basis, it's a good video to make. And finally, maybe a video on the additional documentation you should provide with your authorization application. Because what you saw on this video is only a small part of it. Uh, when I submitted my forms to the government for my renewal, uh, the total number of pages was 22, so it was only 
I guess about double, twice as many pages as what you've seen here are what I will typically send off when I go for a renewal. So I should maybe cover that a little bit. All these things can be helpful. So it's quite a, it's quite a broad topic, this authorization to carry. Not a whole lot of uh, really good information out there. So it's my purpose out here to, to fill that, that hole. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you also subscribe to this channel so that you get updates when these subsequent videos come along. I'll uh, try to tag them on on the screens here and I'll, especially well on the uh, up here I guess and on the end screen if you watch to the very end I usually have linked videos there that will probably be the, the ones that are the natural follow-up to the previous video including this one that you're watching so it may not come up right away but it'll be there eventually so uh, set your so click that alarm, that bell icon also on YouTube that will give you notifications when videos come out. And importantly, click like on the video please because that's what helps improve uh, the channel's ratings on YouTube and, and boost it in their algorithm so, so that more people see this. So from the way to Native Chronicles, I want to wish you God bless and catch you next time. Okay. 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 Okay.